Okay, I think uh, most of you are familiar with Curtis's popular uh, gut bomb bloodworm. Well, uh, I wanted to develop a kind of a, a really specific damselfly nymph. And so I used the gut bomb uh, technique to make the body of this fly. Anyway, I know there are a lot of really simple damsels out there, and I actually fish a lot of the simple damsels. But if you want one that's a little bit more complex and realistic, this is the one for you. All right, I'm just going to start dressing the hook with uh, all of UTC 70 all the way to the back. The tail on this fly is going to be a hairline woolly bugger marabou in, in olive. Um, and this, this marabou is really cool. It, it really has a lot of shine to it. And it's uh, very movable. Lots of movement in the water. So as you can see, it's just kind of uh, really frizzy. I'm going to pull some fibers off of the, the stem and use those for the tail. So if you've seen a, a damselfly nymph swim in the water, they're really cool. Uh, but their, their tails aren't very long at all. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tie in this woolly bugger marabou and kind of pinch it off about where I need it to be. So about like that. It's about maybe two-thirds the length of the, the whole fly. So once I've got that tied down, I'm going to come up here about to where the thorax is going to start and tie it down again and wrap over that. What's that what that's going to do is just create a nice tie-in base or tie-down base for the rest of my materials. Okay, now for the gut bomb technique. That just consists of, and, and I probably won't go through as many steps as Curtis did on his. Um, I'm just going to take some uh, scud back, some uh, eighth inch scud back in clear color. And we'll just tie that in right here where we tied our marabou in. We're going to kind of stretch it ever so slightly as we pull that back. And now we're going to attach some crystal flash. And when I'm going to when I attach this, and I, I, I could have done this all at the same time, but I'm going to put this right on the top. Because that will show through just a little bit as we tie this. So we've got those tied in. Take my thread up to the where the thorax is going to start and I will just kind of stretch this tight as I wrap over this body. Okay so to color this body up I'm going to use two colors of marker. I'm going to use a chartreuse sharpie and an olive sharpie. And the chartreuse sharpie I'm just going to kind of tag the belly just a little bit. So I did the belly with the chartreuse sharpie, just barely gives it a hint of, of color, and then the top and sides I'm going to do with the olive one. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my crystal flash and wrap that forward. Okay, at this point we're going to add some hydro, and we're just going to use a, a a very thin layer of hydro over this fly. You'll see that that hydro almost kind of mixes the colors together. So with the, with the rotary vise I can kind of rotate it back and forth to, to make that body pretty round. And then I'm just going to tag that. Okay, the next step on this fly is to create the eyes. And uh, usually, if I'm going to do these flies, I just make like a dozen sets of eyes. I've got hemostats. I've got 30-pound um, monofilament in here. And uh, you can see these hemostats are, are well used for burning stuff like this. And I'm just going to kind of burn those, keeping the flame pretty far away from them, actually. 
until they just kind of ball up. And be careful if you catch them on fire, they'll they'll go really fast. So essentially, those are the eyes. Now they have really buggy eyes, so even though those eyes are pretty far apart like that, it'll make uh, it'll make for a pretty realistic looking damsel. So I'm just going to tie those eyes in right on top of the shank, just crisscross those right in there. So now to build our thorax here, we're going to build the thorax kind of similar to how we we built the mask marauder. Where we're going to build up some dubbing, we're going to put some rubber legs in there, or you can use hen hackle, whatever you want. And then we're going to kind of fold it over again, uh, the over the eyes and tie it off. So the thorax dubbing that we're going to use is uh, Arizona synthetic dubbing. And... You know, this, this Arizona Synthetic, it's really small, fine fibers. It's hard to get them to dub onto your thread. And so one of the things that I always do is I use touch dub wax, this hairline touch dub wax. And instead of like putting the, the wax directly on the, the thread, what I do is I just grab my finger and just kind of rub some into my fingers. And that will make it so just the right amount of wax is used to, to put that dubbing on the, on the thread. Okay, so we're going to just kind of build up a thorax here, right, until we, we get behind the eyes. Um, and then we're going to end our, our dubbing right in the middle of that thorax and take our thread and kind of build a little band of thread. I think you can see that through there. And the reason we do that is that's where we're going to attach the uh, rubber legs. So what I've got here is a uh, hairline buggy nymph legs in dark olive and the reason why we use these is they're a, a really fine diameter I mean they're they're really fine legs uh, you could use like the silicone streamer legs silly legs something like that but these are these are quite a bit more fine than the rest of them so I'm just gonna take one section of, of a silicone leg and tie it in on the far side so you can see that's kind of how that that tied in then I'm going to take this this long section of the of the leg and just fold it over and tie it in on the other side on right on that band so you can see I've got something like this now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that longer fiber and trim it off and cut the other leg so now I've got crisscross legs. Now those are longer than what I need and they're not really splayed out the way I want them to. So you take a little bit more dubbing and you take some dubbing and wrap right in between those legs. And now I'm going to advance my thread to right behind the eye so I'm going to pull the front legs back and my thread will stop right behind those eyeballs. Now this is where we're going to tie in our wing case um, and I've got I've got Fino skin and this is a uh, mottled olive color and I like this color because it's a little bit more kind of chartreuse-ish. It's got yellows in it and stuff so a lot of times these damsels will be pretty complex and they, they will be kind of brighter colored. So this adds a little bit of brightness and uh, you'll see that I'm going to tone it down a little bit with a marker too. Alright, so I've taken the pheno skin and I've cut a little notch into it. Into it. You know, I'm going to I'm going to use that just to kind of lay on top of the fly. Um, so and it and it's a little bit thinner than the gap of the hook. So that's that's kind of how you're going to gauge how wide you should cut it. So you peel the paper backing off, and the side that was stuck to the paper backing is always more glossy. So I'm going to put that side up, and I'm just going to tie that in so it barely covers up that thorax. So a couple loose wraps here, and then you gradually pull it tight. So there we've got it tied in on top of the thorax. Okay, we're going to pull it back now, 
and we're going to add some more dubbing. And we're going to just figure eight the first couple wraps and then end with a few turns in front of the eyes so we've got it kind of built up like that. We'll just pull the dubbing over, or I mean uh, the pheno skin over. And this is kind of a tricky thing because if I just pull this over it's going to fold all up, not how I want it. So I'm going to kind of pull it out and angle it toward me and loosely put my thread on top of it like this and then just kind of pull it out as I cinch that down and it will it will just kind of bind down right exactly where I want it. So after I have it tied in I'm going to add some security wraps in front of it and then trim it off. Alright so now I'm going to trim my legs. So I'm going to trim the back leg so that it's roughly the, the same length as the body. I never stretch these legs to trim them because then when they retract they're shorter than you think. And the front legs just cut them about as long as the back legs. Alright so there you have it. Um, at this point we're going to just do a couple more things to it. Just going to take like a pipe cleaner or some velcro and just kind of brush out the underbody just a little bit. And then if you want to touch up the eyes, you can take like an olive sharpie and color the eyes olive. Or actually, I'll show you what black looks like. Because those will show up a little bit better than olive. And then to finish it off, we're just going to, you know, secure the thorax and the head and the thread a little bit with just a tiny bit of hydro. You can see that these legs also have a lot of UV fluorescence and so does the body. So, anyway, that's a gut bomb damsel. We've been fishing that for about a year now and it's really produced well for us.